Hello everyone, um, I'd like to start by saying a big thank you for having me here today. Now, there's nothing like going to the theatre and seeing a live performance, but a trip to the arts can be expensive and planning one is time consuming. At Get Go Culture, we want to change this and use our app and subscription service to get more people out to the arts more often. Now, before I tell you how we're going to do this, I'd love to tell you the story of how this came about. So, I'm an actor, and this is my proof. This is me at the Shaftesbury Theatre playing a young Boris Johnson <laughs> on skis. What more do you want? <laughs> now, prior to this, I came to Guildhall to learn my trade, and then I headed straight to the industry. You see, I was really excited to get going, but I quickly became disheartened when I saw how much great work was going by unnoticed. I'd look around the auditoriums and they'd be half full or even worse, despite the quality of the production and the amazing venue it was in. You see, as an actor, I just want artists to step on stage to full houses every night of the week. And equally, I want audiences to experience all the work that London has to offer, not just the big shows you see advertised on buses. So, armed with an idea, I joined Guildhall's Creative Entrepreneurs and I learnt two key facts. Number one, two out of three audiences want to increase the amount of times they go to the theatre each year. However, in 2018, an estimated 4.5 million theatre tickets went unsold. In London, that's almost 90,000 a week. You see, these two just don't add up for me. I don't understand why more people weren't going to the arts. So our team ran some extensive research and found three common barriers. Number one, the cost of a ticket. Number two, the time it takes to organise and book the event. And number three, the difficulty in deciding what to go to. So, let me show you how GetGo Culture solves these problems. As you can see, our users sign up, they pick a membership, and they let us know their preferences, their availability, and even how adventurous they are. This gets sent to us, and then we curate them trips out to the arts on a monthly basis. Now, for as little as £25 per person per month, this is a cheaper way of going to the theatre, as the average spend on a ticket in London is a staggering £50. There's no indecision, as all the events are chosen for our subscribers by our arts experts. And finally, it takes our subscribers about 90 seconds to sign up. Then all they have to do is go to the event. There's no skimming through reviews, there's no staring at seating plans, and there's no printing out tickets. They just have to sign up and go. Problems solved. So it's not just me that's responsible for get-go culture. I've got an amazing team behind me. We've got Chris, our CTO. Now, he's a former software manager at Monzo Bank. Now, Chris is responsible for building our app, which combines API functionality and algorithms. And we use these to match up subscribers to their events as quickly as possible. We've got Steve here, who's our wonderful non-exec. Now, Steve is a seasoned entrepreneur himself. He's also at the board of Barbican. Now, Steve is helping oversee the business trajectory of GetGo Culture. And beneath him, you can see we've got some of our arts experts. Now, these are the individuals who help curate the events for our subscribers. Now, they're working artists in need of a flexible income. And it's their love and passion for the arts which make them the right people to do the job. So, who are we targeting GetGo Culture at? London working professionals, or as the audience agency defines them, <coughs> metroculturals. Now, what's really interesting about metroculturals is they most notably believe that time and convenience is more important to them than cost. They're also the audience group that are most likely to want to re-attend arts events throughout the year. Now, I have a think at the moment, guys, about people who work at UBS or, or maybe Deutsche Bank around the corner. They've got two things that we need, really. They've got disposable income, but a serious lack of time. So GetGo Culture fulfills their need for a regular break from work and a trip out to the arts without any hassle of organising it. Now, maybe they've got a spouse and they're being nagged to go on dates more often. We can sort that too, because we have a couple sign up. So, we ran a trial in 2018, and let's hear from some of the London working professionals that was on it. Get Go Culture's been amazing. We lead pretty hectic lifestyles, so it's always been difficult finding time to research what's going on in the area and what's actually any good. 
But Get-Go has been awesome because it does all the legwork for us, so we've really just been able to enjoy the shows. Plus, we've seen some amazing shows that we wouldn't have even thought of. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to what's next. I loved my Get-Go culture experience. I got to see events I never would have heard about without doing any of the legwork. When I was new to London, Get-Go culture provided me with an affordable way to get a personalised experience of London's thriving theatre scene. So now let's move on to our competitors. Now, as you know, there are many marketplaces online and in booths scattered around London. Get-Go Culture is not one of them. You see, the stark differences between services such as Today Tix or Ticketmaster and Get-Go Culture is that we do not list tickets. We're a curated service that sends people to the events once a month. Now, it's better to think of us more like a wine club. People tell us what they like, what their tastes are, and then we send out the goods on a regular basis. Unlike Quintessential, however, our combination of a focus on the arts, affordable pricing, our arts experts, and our clever tech means that we can get the masses out of the theatre, and not just a select few. You see, this really is why we're so distinctive, and in terms of theatre subscription services of this kind, we're actually the first to market. Now, speaking of market, the one we're entering is huge. As you can see, UK performances are worth over £2 billion. And interestingly enough, arts and culture overtook agriculture in its economic contribution to the UK. So it's a thriving business market sector we're entering. And I'd like to now show you the figures we're hoping to get across the first five years. Now, while you're having a look at this, I thought it would be a good time for me to explain the get-go culture business model. And it's so simple. Users pay a monthly subscription fee, and the difference between this fee and the cost of the tickets is our profit margin. Now, as you can see, we also offer things like extra free arts events, discounts at the venues, and entrance into our lotto-style golden ticket scheme. And these are just added bonuses to incentivise our subscribers to keep their subscriptions going. Now, we've got a clear good bit of profit going on here, and we expect to be in profit as early as year two. We've also got a 5550 pledge, which I'm actually really proud of. And what that means is 5% of profit will get given away to arts charities. 5% of our subscriptions will be given to those that can't afford the arts. And 50% of our staff we're aiming to have as our arts experts, artists in need of flexible work. But it's all very well me making a nice looking chart here. How are we actually going to get the figures? Well, that leads me on to our fundraising. You see, we're looking to raise £150,000 in investment by the, end of next, by the end of this July. Now, as you can see, we've got SEIS Advanced Assurance already. I'd like to tell you what we're going to spend this investment on. Mainly, it'll be going towards executing our marketing. And this is a mix between digital and print paid promotions. We'd also like to upgrade our software so we can cope with a variety of different London booking systems that are out there. And finally, I'd love to hire a full-time developer to work alongside Chris to ensure all our tech runs smoothly all of the time. In the very short term, though, we're in desperate need of funds to cover some core legal costs, such as getting us onto seed legals in advance of the raise. We'd also like to continue our current marketing strategies and build our waiting list and grow our early adopters, which leads me on to where are we at the moment? So as you saw earlier, we ran a 2018 trial and we got some wonderful feedback from that and that spurred us on in our mission. Um, we opened briefly in 2019 to early adopters and we've got 40 paying users from that. And we're really just hoping to learn and test from them before we spend the investment and before our full launch this September. We won an award last year and we've been featured in five bits of press, including the award-winning Theatre Full Stop. But potentially what I'm most proud of at the moment is the amazing partners we've got to date. Let's have a little look at them. Now, as you can see, you may recognise some, you may not recognise others, but these are theatres and venues at the top of their game. They're world-leading venues. And I'm so proud to have them as collaborators to get Go Culture. Now, the main thing they've offered us is we're allowed to run the service with them. Many of them have offered us discounts on their tickets or early bookings to their events. They've also given us comp tickets, so I can send our team of arts experts to the events to try them before we send our subscribers out. And finally, they're going to be integral to executing our marketing, as they've agreed to help promote Get-Go Culture when we fully launch. And that's really key, because the combined social media following of these lot 
is well over one million. And that leads me finally on to where do you want to be in two years' time? So we'd love to increase the amount of partnerships we have to 100. But not just theatres, music venues, dance halls, comedy clubs, so we can live up to the name Get Go Culture. I'd like to increase the membership options as well so we can really grab as big a chunk of the market I spoke of earlier. Things like an offer for students, uh, varying tiers in our core membership, and further developing our concierge service. And finally, I'd like to launch in another location because Get Go Culture works so easily in any culture-heavy city. Around the UK, places like Bristol or Cardiff would be perfect. But there's nothing to say it couldn't work further afield. New York, like London, has many, many theatres, but as well, it has many empty seats. So Get Go Culture could really work there too. Finally, the impact we're trying to make is really simple. We want theatre going to be as easy as possible. We want people to see theatre going as a regular occasion and not just a once in a while luxury. Finally, we want to get more people out to the arts more often. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Joshua. That's really, really fascinating and a, and a great idea. Um, just the thought I had before I bring in my, my colleagues here. Um, this idea that you could sort of possibly go to a, a newspaper and actually yeah. get them to make a sort of a club, mm -hmm. a, a Sunday Times theatre club, where yeah. basically you use all your resources mm -hmm. and it, it turbocharges your membership. Yeah. Would, that, would something like that work? Yeah, yeah, I think that's a really good avenue to go down. Like you said, it would just it would get us a lot of memberships very, very quickly. Um, so so that would definitely be one. And, you know, places like The Guardian, like, like I sort of made the analogy about wine clubs earlier, lots of the papers, as you rightly say, offer things like that. So there's nothing stopping us and doing that. And the other thing that... Another way, obviously, for this to, to work, you need a quick membership and you, um, and, you, and you need a huge marketing spend or to find another way of doing it. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I thought of, perhaps, was, you know, banks have these membership benefits for premium banking yeah. where they basically can give a 50% discount on your subscription for a year. Yeah. That could get, get you a very high membership and, and get, get the, the wheel. Yeah, 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 I think that's a, that's a really good that's idea. Yeah, and can I bring my colleagues in? Mike, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd like to talk, Josh, a very impressive presentation, by the thank way. You, thank you, thank um, you. About your fundraising, I've had a look at your crowdfunder website, and I think last month you raised about 3,500. That's correct, yeah. Something like that. You've got a target of 150,000. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you could just tell us a little bit more about how you're going with that, how you're proposing to re raise that, I think, by the end of next month? It's by the end of this month, yeah that's, yeah, that's really the goal. So yeah, the crowdfunder was um, a thing we launched very quickly and briefly, and, and the main goal of that was less so to get the funds, more to get some early adopters on board um, in advance of the full launch. And, and that kind of goes hand in hand with the next part of the question, which is so we can really test them before we start the, the investment raise. Um, in terms of our investment raise, you know, uh, part of the process is done already. We've got the SEIS advance assurance, and now it's just you know pulling on our network, our team's networks, to be introduced to, to angel investors, as it were, um, in advance of that raise. Are, are you able to talk in a little bit more detail about how you're actually going about that? Yeah, well, yeah. Like, um, the end of July isn't very far away. Yeah, like, like I said, I mean, um, it's really about... I, I mean, I'm already in talks with some investors. Like, we've got a team. Steve, our non-exec, is, is, is a wonderful seasoned entrepreneur. He's got lots of different contacts. So it's all about, you know, going to some of the meetings that we've got set up at the moment, finding the lead investor for our ACIS round, and, and then going from there. I mean, I do understand end of July is, is going to come really quickly, but um, I'd like to set that strict deadline to just push the thing forwards. OK, thank you. Can I ask a question about yeah. um, how it works with your partners? Yeah. Because it seems to me that um, for, for theatres which who know they have unsold seats for that night as part of their yield management, it obviously makes sense to, mm -hmm. to sell a lot of tickets onto to your service. How much notice have you been giving your customers about what they're actually going to see, or is that part of it that... You know, they found out on the day and you've managed to yeah, match them up with something. Yeah, no, that, that's a good question, actually. We kind of, it's kind of all about building the excitement for, for the monthly event. and we, we let them know about a week advance uh, before, before the event they go to. So they enter a locked-in period. Uh, and the point of that really is because we understand people are really busy, they need to change the event, maybe they need to cancel, things like that. So we try and make that as tight a deadline as possible. So about one week we tell them what they're going to. And it comes through on app, just like you saw in the video. OK, and it wouldn't be more of a, an opportunity, I'm just thinking, in terms of theatres who are mm -hmm. trying to do their yield management and trying to make things, you know, to make sure... Or th will they already release seats that to you at a special discount a week in advance? 
Yeah, so it really does vary from venue to venue. But, um, you know, some venues as well, they'll, they'll give me a call or, or an email and say, we've got some comp ticks. And then we'll just offer them as an, as an added extra to our existing subscribers. Like I said, like an extra thing is they can get more, more events for their monthly fee. Because £20 isn't much to spend on a ticket in London. Um, it's not, but I mean, it's amazing what you can get for that, really. I mean, yes, if you look at things like Hamilton or Wicked or the big West End shows, it's like £200 a seat. But um, I, the best theatre I've seen was £12 at the Arcola, ever. You know, there's, there's really great work out there for good value. Okay. And can I just um, ask, how, how are you going to get your 1,000 subscribers in quite a short period of time? So you've yeah. got 40 at the moment, did you 40, say? 40, yeah. And, and, and like I said, that's kind of like a deliberately small amount yeah. so we could cope with, with that amount. But I think, I think the key thing is really utilising our marketing campaign. You know, we've got a really fantastic marketeer called Emma Martin. She used to run the marketing for the Almeida Theatre. And it's kind of like a mix between print and digital promotion. We've got some strong PR campaigns we've got set in the loop as well. You know, it's really key. If we got into the evening standard, the amount of readers that read that on their daily commute, it would be fantastic. And um, like I said, our partner venues, they've already agreed to help us push out the word once, once we have launched. And, and their combined social media following is one million. So, I mean, um, I do understand, you know, 1,000 is a lot, and that's to end the year by, but um, I think it's important to be ambitious with this. Absolutely. So, yeah. so, as you stand at the moment, what's your greatest concern for... Oh. the business moving forward? That's a really good question, actually. I, I, I guess my greatest concern... Um, I want to appease both parties, really. That's my biggest concern. You know, I want, I want the venues to be really happy with the service. It's smooth running. It's no problem for them. But I want audiences to go to the theatre and go, yes, I want this regularly in my life. That's the thing I really want to get from them. OK, thank you very thank much. Thank you. I mean, you certainly found... A, a a gap in the market, and you've certainly found a, you know, some, somewhere where the market isn't working. I mean, uh, to, to run on maybe several years ahead, I don't know. What about music and opera? Is, is, there, is there the scope to do the same absolutely, thing? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I said, you know, my clothes, you know, I want it to be get go culture, if that makes sense, not just right. for theatre. And, you know, some of the venues we're partnered with at the moment, like Barbican, you know, they offer multi different art forms, such as dance or music as well. So I, I'd really love to get that, get that out too, because I think. People just think there's only the Royal Opera House and that's it, but that mm. is just not the case. There are hundreds of opera companies. Yeah, there. exactly. Well, is this, is this London-based or is it going to be yeah. UK-based, of course? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, at the moment, we're London-based. I mean, that, it's just the most convenient way to do it because there's, I mean, there's 241 theatres just in London alone. So mm. um, it's, it's the best place to start with. But like I said, you know, you know I love the culture scene in Bristol as well. Um, I think it worked really well there and, and, and America. You know, it's easily scalable for the rest of the country, you think? Yeah, really, really easily scalable. You know, there's no, we don't have an office which we're hubbing from. There's no, you know, certain resources we have. You know, it can all be run by email, and essentially. know of other productions. Yeah, of course, yeah. I mean, that, I guess you asked, like, what my biggest concern with my, my, my least biggest concern is getting the arts experts because in terms of actors that need flexible work, there's, there's just thousands of them. So, yeah, up and down the country. Okay. okay. Does anyone have any, anything else to add? Well, thank you so Lovely. much. Lovely. Thank, thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.